Denver. Oh, you got all the boys. Let's yeah. say what up. Say what up. You guys are styling over uh, here. Yeah. This is good, player. Nice yeah. to meet you, dude. What up, dog? I'm John. Casey. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you man. You yeah, guys out there or what, dude? <laughs> nah, see you guys up there. Huh? Yeah, we'll see you up in the park for We'd sure. Love to see yeah. it. Woo! Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. From Keystone, Colorado. Another perfect, beautiful day. Today we broke out the 100's 686 collab, and it's a hot one, but she's comfy. We got Miguel Verde. How's the rib, bub? It's not the greatest thing I've ever experienced. Are we performing today or what? You're performing. All I'm right. Gonna, I'll get behind the lens. And that's the first flap for my boy Nick Geeson. No warm up no for warm the up. average human. Man, it was all that bulletproof we drank this morning. Yeah, the hard Just chugging. I got it. What's up, dog? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope there are literally hundreds and thousands of people that are watching and watch this video. And I hope this thing goes viral because I'm about to drop the most crucial information that you could ever be given if you snowboard terrain parks. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or expert, this video is about to break down what every single park rider or person that wants to enter the park should know and needs to know. But first, I have to give a little backstory of how and why I'm even doing this video. So prep your ears we got a bunch of neck coming at you started off the morning spilled my coffee beans all over the place couldn't get my camera to work my boots didn't fit everything was just kind of going off I know how that works so I took a five minute break I went outside I breathed deep into it because I didn't want it to escalate I didn't want these things to magnify themselves and sure enough we pack up the cars with the boys we're heading to the mountain forget my coffee entire mug and I'm fasting I'm on a 12 hour fast and I have no food no coffee so I'm well aware of what's going on and I'm trying to fix it, but I see the cycle continue and continue. We get to the mountain, I forgot my pass at home. Now we're at the mountain, we're hungry, we don't have a pass, we're in the parks, but we're conscious of what this can still be. It can still be a good day because I'm aware of it. I put on my good music, I'm cruising through the park, first run warming up, I hit a rail that has a transfer to another rail. There's nobody in the way when I'm hitting it, but there's a kid sitting to the side of the rail. I'm board siding the first rail, I pop over to the next rail, as the kid stands up, doesn't look uphill, drops into the landing right where I'm about to land. I'm a good enough rider to where I can land, hold my edge, and almost hit him, but cut to the side. He doesn't look uphill, cuts towards the other feature, which is a closeout, causing me to slam on my brakes again and slide and hit the feature, and he has no idea it even happened. I get down to the bottom to try to talk to him and tell him what was going on. We get into a feud somehow, and it ended up that he was having a rough day, I was having a rough day, and we squashed it super proper. We gave each other daps, we explained the scenario from both sides, and we worked it out. It was Gucci. So fast forward a couple more runs, and I'm cruising through the park, not even hitting any features. I see park crew hitting a closeout rail. He's board sliding it perfectly. There's a beginner rider riding right along with him, but a little ahead. The beginner rider starts to turn into the landing as my man pops off the rail. As you know, if you're in the air, you cannot control anywhere where you're going. He's a good enough rider, just like me earlier, to land, but he couldn't turn in time, smashed into the kid, kid caught a heel edge, flipped over his back, got smoked. The park crew literally apologized, knowing that he was in the right regardless, but you have to because it's your job. And I went down to the kid and I asked him, I was like, hey man, do you know what just happened and do you know why that happened? And he literally says, no, I don't have a clue. Can you tell me that was my first time through the terrain park? And this is how you should handle a situation when you see somebody doing something wrong that puts themselves and other people in danger. You have to stay calm and you have to explain to them exactly what happened, what they could have done to prevent it and what they should do next time in the future. This kid had no idea. So I explained to him what I just told you guys about how you cannot move if you're in the air and also that if anybody is hitting a feature in the terrain park, they have right away, 100%. If you're not hitting the feature, your main thing needs to be to stay to the side of any feature towards the fence. And if you're ever gonna traverse over because you wanna get to another feature that's maybe smaller on the other side, turn your head, look uphill, look the other way, look back uphill, triple check, because this is your life, and you're not trying to have the edge of a sharp board go into your back, and just make sure that no one's coming. Then you can cruise over and you can hit the feature. 
but you have to be very aware that everybody that is in a terrain park knows what they're doing and you require speed to get through these features. So what I have come to conclude from this entire negative day is that I'm willing to take all of the brutal things that have happened to me to finally consciously realize that this is what's making me make this edit. So if none of that happened, I probably wouldn't have made this edit, which will potentially save hundreds of thousands of lives of people that are entering the terrain park because the terrain park should be fun but even more it should be safe we're already doing insane tricks we're already riding at high speeds super high consequence that we don't need to be risking ourselves getting injured from impacting with each other it's just not realistic it's not what we're trying to do and i'm pretty stoked right now not only because i was smart enough to bring some pollo up on the hill mm, but also because i think I have finally reset myself after I realized why all these bad things needed to happen to me because I'm down to take the sacrifice for one day to be spilling coffee that I have and not having the most ideal day ripping a perfect bluebird Colorado day with the homies and not really feeling that on point. Those are quality problems. That's what we're looking for in life. So now that we got all that out of the system, let's put on some tunes. Let's go try to find some of the homies. Maybe I'll stack some clips of the boys, or maybe I'll just be snapping right back into it. Now that I know the rest of this edit, we are gonna do our best to give you guys as many tips as we can that are gonna help you be safe for your first time, your fifth time, or your 500th time riding in the terrain park. And this goes for skiers and snowboarders and chicken eaters. Can't stop, dude. What are you doing, Bob? I've done nothing all day. Dude, it's been crazy. Oh, I'm okay. actually doing nothing normal. Alright. Breadcrumbs? No. Fuck what, no. what is it? It's just chicken. It's easy. Is my man's going for you right now? I am now. My new life. Chicken style. Look what he's eating, guys. Yeah. The whole day was so Did negative. Did you come to the left side when I was fighting with that orange guy? Here's the thing. I literally turned this video into a, like, rules of the terrain park. Like, things you need to know. Oh, wow. For beginner, intermediate, and expert so we can save our yeah. lives and the lives of everybody. So, yeah. what kind of story did you have? So, I was cruising down the trail pretty fast, you know? Coming around the bank, turn right, and then I have a guy who's on the far right side of the trail. And I watch people's heads and their eyes when they're riding and try to see where they're looking because it's kind of like you're on a highway, you know? So this guy's on the far right side of the trail. I'm watching him. He goes from this far right side, starts carving basically uphill. He's not looking at all. I'm cruising as well. It's a super busy trail. There's a lot of people out in the early season. And we got super close and I had to stop and then I wanted to talk to him. He got super mad. He was swearing in my face and stuff like that. Just trying to tell him that, hey man, you got to watch where you're going on this trail, especially if you aren't as controlled and that's not a bad thing it's just you got to know your lane and stuff like that the question is can you do a u-turn on a highway 
no. That leads me to say also that even if you are an experienced rider and you're mobbing down the hill, you got to be aware of the people that are in front of you that could make a sporadic move at any time That's because their riding and their perception of what's going on is completely different than yours if you know what you're doing. Most beginner riders might not be able to even hold an edge on a straightaway, so they might catch their edge or have to traverse because they physically can't do it. It's literally like rolling dice. You just don't know what you're going to get yeah. with a beginner, so even if you anticipate what they're going to do, you just got to be aware and just be prepared prepared for the craziest maneuvers at any point in time. Yeah. But shout out to all beginners because we're all there at one point. What do we got, one more run? Maybe two. So we got negative 10 plus 11 runs left. Good. there's somebody that's in front of you that's going a little bit slow and you want more speed to hit that feature or if they fall and you're about to hit it do yourself a favor and do everybody a favor go around the feature it's one feature there's so many more you'll hit them next run which also leads into if park crew is ever raking anything or near something or has their board on it the entire feature is closed off <sighs> Altitude, oh. bro. We got more. Dude, there was a lot that run. Yeah. The kickers in front of the features are made to hit that feature. And when you're approaching it, the rut gets dug in a certain way that aligns you to hit the feature properly the way that it is. So if you're a beginner and you want to start hitting jumps, it is not okay to hit the side of the jump and go off of it and not hit the actual feature that it's made for because it changes the rut and the direction of the rut that is made for hitting that feature, which puts every other rider that knows what they're doing in danger. Good point. This one's for literally everybody. Take a run and just cruise through the park. Go. Look at what you're working with because right. they could change stuff overnight. Sometimes they'll put a closeout or a rail at the end of another rail and you'll go in just trying to hit a ball, not realizing as you get bucked, oh my God, there's a down bar with a donkey at the end of it. Like, just be aware of what you're approaching. It's always better to miss out on one run and look at your whole run and then be able to ride for the rest of the season. We're yeah, going for totally longevity, agree. boys. Always scope your runs, especially if it's a new terrain park. Early season as well, it's changing at all times. We got like 10 minutes to nuke it up to that park. How many clips can we get? That's the question. Let's drip. Yeah, drip. All right, I'll stand right here. Wait, what What was stolen? So when your piece of clothing? The, the, the 686. Actually, wait, one last thing before we cruise this run is that when you are scoping out your line and you're scoping out the features for the first time, the whole park is built so that you can flow through it. So don't cruise in between each feature while you're looking at it. Stay to the side yeah, while you're taking true. your first look through because there's going to be riders that know what's going on and they're going to be mobbing through. Like your boys. Like us right now. one tail grab this thing. It'd be G. Your Just, wish is my command. Let me see some yoga.
got it. One trick that I did the front lip same way when the shade comes in halfway through the day the rails get crazy sticky and you're sore and it's icy and, and you're, you're trying to ride tomorrow right keep your neck in check You'll have a big red. Who's big red? Yo, you'll, you'll find out in about two seconds. I want to know. Oh, VR. Yo. Big red. Homie's been here since day one. If you guys ever go to Key, make sure you say what up to big red. <laughs> All right. Last thing we're going to say for this whole park etiquette day is probably something that goes without needing to be said. Don't steal people's stuff from the mountain. I showed up today, and as you guys saw, I opened up that 686 hundreds collab jacket like two weeks ago. You guys wanted me to test it out. You wanted to see some footage in it. I broke it out today, brought it up on the hill. First run, it was smoking hot. It's Bluebird, it's Colorado. I don't even know if you're ever gonna need a jacket unless it's a pow day. <laughs> Last run, went True. to scoop it up, thing's gone. I don't even know how many people have that. It's a very rare jacket. It's expensive as all hell. And if anybody sees anybody with this jacket, or knows anything about somebody taking this jacket shoot me a dm we could settle this so calmly it'll be so over so easy nothing will happen i'll leave a photo of what it looks like right here of me putting the jacket on this morning and going up there but i really really hope that jacket comes back to me whoever took that thing i'm rooting for you Bob. we're praying on you we're buddy. praying for you just so y'all know, I wasn't lying about that core shot earlier. Dude, my whole finger fits in there. That thing is ugly. That thing is heavy. I feel bad for you. That's why you should never break out your new board when it's preseason, though. Even though. Straight up. Oof. Let's see how we did. Here's the new board. That's the base. Oh, oh no! Oh, I knew I got smoked. Oh. I my. I knew I hit something bad. We are literally talking about it. Oh, the boys. Yeah, it was bound to happen. You know, wow. I knew it was gonna happen. At least you got a board to have a core shot on. And don't tune out yet, fam. We got some more tips. Really? I thought of three more bangers, but we gotta go inside. Nava. Eat some food right now. Really? And say hi to Nava. And say hi to Nava. No, all right. We got to the top and we were like, his jacket has gone, he must have bounced. Someone stole it. For sure. Yeah, How easy is it gonna be to see who's wearing your boy's jacket? I'm, I'm rooting for <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, we're back. And discussing with the boys last night, like Geeson. How you doing? There are too many things that I didn't cover and we wanna make this video super on point. So we're turning it into a double day. We brought the coffee this time. Vibes are all time. We got the new jacket. First runs through the park, corduroy. Basically nobody's here, which is also a great time to learn. And we're gonna go see what they got set up right now. <laughs> for my man. What's up, dude? Hey, what's going on? How you doing? What's your name? Joe. Joe. Keystone, what's your claim? Dude, day seven. Yes. We're out here. <laughs> That's it. It's beauty. That's me, brother. All right, we're jumping into these things. Geese in. Yep. So, what's up, guys? One of the things when you're in the terrain park as a beginner, you're gonna take falls. And if you're not smoked, just pop up and get to the side as quickly as possible. If you are cruising and you see somebody else take a fall that needs help, get to the top of the lip and exit off so everybody above the run can be aware of what's going on. And to add to that, if you're hiking a feature and you're strapping in, make sure that you're not sitting in or near the landing either. So I know when you're riding in the park, it can be a little intimidating and there's a lot of other riders that are probably a lot better than you or much more into uh, park riding already. Don't be nervous. A lot of times in the beginning, it's good to 
sit on the side and just watch people hit features. Observe how much speed they take into it, where they slow down. You'll see in the snow little marks, like sideways marks where the edges have uh, of other riders use that as a placement for where they start when hitting an object. And also you can always go up to people. People in snowboarding are generally really nice as long as you don't cut them off beforehand. So we're approaching the first feature down here. A lot of people like to stand, and we're just gonna cruise through. Watch what my man does to let everybody know casually that he's dropping it in front of them. And you see how quickly he's out of that landing? There could always be somebody right behind him. So a lot of times too, you'll see people sitting over a knuckle just like this. Oh! If you're gonna chill somewhere, pull off to the side where you know people can see you from afar and they're not gonna be hopping in the air and dome piecing your helmet. All right, we're just gonna knock out the rest of this sheet before we hit the 30 minute marker. All right, if you're cruising into a feature and there's somebody kind of near you and you both are battling for who's gonna hit it and you're not gonna hit it, verbally announce, hey, it's all you, man, not hitting it. Game changer. Not only don't hit the features when park crew is raking them, but if they're closed, usually there might be something wrong with it and it's actually a danger. So if something's closed, it's closed for a reason. Do your best to not hit it. And as much as we were stressing yesterday to look uphill, look uphill, look uphill, make sure that you look downhill before you look uphill because you're moving forwards and something can change in front of you. And you don't want to be looking uphill to try to save yourself and then smash into somebody that stopped in front of you. So always look downhill, look uphill, check your surroundings. So important. Communication between other people when you're listening to music. It's good when you are, know the park, but when you're unaware of your surroundings, it's kind of good to be able to hear other people when they're letting you know that they're hitting a feature or uh, if somebody's coming up faster behind you, it's a lot safer to be able to hear people. So not listening to music is, is uh, really beneficial. Keeps you on point. Safe. Keeps you on point. You know, keeping yourself safe. If you're gonna, you know, if you're riding, just kind of cruising around the, the uh, rest of the resort, it's, it's one thing, but when you're gonna enter the train park and be with other riders that are trying to, you know, not only do something that's already dangerous, but be aware of themselves. It's kind of nice to be sober and not be drinking or not, you know, be intoxicated in a terrain park because you put a lot of other people at risk and not as well as yourself. So, you know, just try to be safe. When you're low key sitting next to somebody on the chairlift claiming they're subbed already. What's up guys, how's it going? <laughs> All right, we covered a lot, so we're gonna put down some drip for you. We've also been riding a lot lately. And if you're not fully feeling it, keep your tricks basic. 50-50s carbs, just have fun. You don't always have to be throwing down like your boy. last year oh copper copper good, man. my guy Dude, how, how are you boys all right coach tommy v's got one banger tip for you guys my biggest tip is just simply give people space you don't want to just hit a rail while somebody's already on it because they're going to fall and you're probably going to run into them so just give them some space 
You heard it from the man. The shred soles, good stuff, bro. once and this dude is way more stoked than me almost looks like Rick all right guys I'm gonna take the goggles off show you my eyes to really let you know how important this video is to me and how serious I am when I say all of this stuff and that even if you do make some of these mistakes or you have before it's about just communicating and being aware always looking around trying to let people know and coordinate what's going on so that we can all snowboard and ski, have as much fun as we can while being safe. And I don't say this often, but this is a big one and it's bigger than me. If you guys got any information from this or you think it benefited you 1% or can benefit anybody else, do me a huge favor and this whole world a favor, give this video a share, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in case we missed anything epic. If there's really good comments, I'll pin them at the top. And we didn't cover big jumps really that much because there's not much here right now. We'll do that more in the season, but if you guys are stoked on these videos, I'm making videos basically every single day. My new time is gonna be nine o'clock a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and I'm gonna do my best to drop a video every single day, and if I can't, I'll let you guys know what's up. Other than that, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow, 9 a.m. for the absolute dream. Keep those necks safe. Phew.